just about set for kickoff here at Jim Mayo Memorial Stadium in Proctorville. Again, the Tigers will be kicking off, so we'll see Isaac Unger teeing the ball up at the 40. Irons will be kicking off from left to right as we get things started here this evening. About ready to kick off now as Unger has the ball teed up at the 40, kicking off again from left to right, deep to receive for the Fairland Dragons. The J.D. Brumfield standing about the 15. Let's see what number that is on the other side. Is that Brennan West, five? All right, the official blows the whistle, kick is away. It's a high kick over to the 10-yard line where it's off the chest of the receiver who picks it up and runs up the middle across the 15-20, makes a cut 25-30 out to the 34-yard line. That was Michael Stitz who made the return, and the Dragons will set up their first down and 10. 11.53, just underway. And the Dragons will set up first down and 10 at the 34. All right, the Dragons in the huddle. Joel Lambiot will break the huddle, and he'll send three receivers to the right, two to the left in the empty backfield. Five wide receivers set as the ball sets on the left hash mark. Tigers with three down linemen and eight defending. Lambiot looks to the sideline to head coach Melvin Cunningham. Play clock down to five seconds. Lambiot walks up to center, now backpedals into the gun again, takes the shotgun snaps, fakes the pass. Here's the pressure. He's going to just roll down to the turf back at the 27-yard line. Tigers got back in there, got the hands up in the air. That was Dalton Crabtree who had his hands up, blocking the view of Lambiot. And instead of taking a pop, he just laid down on the turf all the way back at the 27. It is second down and about 15 now. Yeah, big Seth Fawson also in there with his big paws up. All right, the Dragons again will send three to the right, one to the left. Michael Stitt in the backfield on his right hip, on the right hip of Joel Lambiot from the shotgun. Lambiot takes the snap and rolls the pocket to the right side. Here comes the pressure again. He's hit, spins off of that, now dumps it off downfield. The pass is short, intended for Gavin Hunt, sliding down at the 39-yard line. So we are seeing a, a little bit of slippage. We saw it on the kick return. We saw it there from Stitt at wide receiver, and the Dragons are now looking at third down and 14. Yeah, opportunities. 16, I'm sorry. Sorry, Jason. Opportunities for the defense to get to Lambiot on that particular play several times as he short hops his receiver running to his right. So... A third down and 16, it's more than seven. It's third down and 17. All right, here we go. Third down and a bunch. Two receivers to each side of the field. The wide side is the right. Michael Stitt, the lone setback with Lambiot from the shotgun. Lambiot takes, dropping back, has time to throw. Plenty of time, now fires across the middle. It's intercepted by Gage Salyers, diving down at the 44-yard line. The Tigers will take over first down and 10. Aaron throw that time by the quarterback, Lambiot. His receiver slipped and fell just as he released it, and they threw a bullet right to the Fighting Tiger defender. Falls down, and Ironton will have it first and 10 in Dragon territory at the 44-yard line. All right, so the Tigers on offense for the first time in great field position, and they're led out by their quarterback, Junior Gage Salyer, 6'1", 185, and a junior. Struggling through the air this year, just 9 for 23, 39% completion percentage, 86 yards and a couple of picks, no touchdowns. Tigers will go with a spread formation, two to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation for Salyers. On his left hip is Reed Carrico. Salyers takes the snap, hands off to Carrico, who runs up the middle. He is hit at the line, dives forward across the 40 and down to the 39-yard line. He was hit by J.D. Brumfield but Carrico was able to get positive yards, about five, to set up second down and five. Carrico, the leading rusher on the season for the Tigers, 238 yards, averaging 6.6 .6 per carry with a touchdown. That was a 74-yard run last week. Second down, and they'll send Bryson Thomas wide to the left. Aiden Barnes goes wide right. The wide side is the left. They'll go with an eye formation now behind Salyers. Salyers takes, hands to Carrico up the middle, hit at the line, and he will not go anywhere. Jacob Rankin in on the stop, and Zeke Ramey also in there for the Dragons. Very short gain, maybe a yard, third down and about four. Cleaned up by Ramey. 
spot of the ball just between the 37 and 38 yard line. It's about a yard and a half gain. Nice uh, defensive stop there by the Fairland Dragons. Again, bringing up a third and short. It's third and three and a half. Which are they get in Fairland Dragon territory just underway. 10 minutes, eight seconds, rolling clock, first quarter. No score, no score, excuse me. Ironton at Fairland. Here's Salyers from the shotgun pistol set. Two receivers left, one right. He'll take the snap, hands off to Carrico again, and he is met at the line. No game. Three straight times, and this time it was Caleb Mullins. And Blaine for means. Blaine for means on the stop. So now Ironton's looking at fourth down and three. No game on the play, brings up fourth down and three for Ironton. Cameron Deer will check in, replacing Reed Carrico. And the Tigers in four down territory going for it here. I understand we're getting, uh, we're not, for some reason we're not on the iHeartRadio app yet. If you're listening on the radio, we're working on that. Single wide receiver right, two to the left. Shotgun for Salyers. Deer moves to his left hip. Salyers takes the snap, runs to the left side. Quarterback keeper, he'll cut up field, has the first down as he's chopped down shy of the 30-yard line. Flag comes in. It's a long throw by the uh, referee, hit somebody right in the back. Now, is this going to go against the Tigers here? Referee still talking about it. Dead ball, personal foul against Fairland. Dead ball, personal foul okay. against the Dragons. So count that fourth down run by Gage Salyers in a first down. Technically four yards on the pickup and a big 15 yard penalty tagged on. All right, so they'll mark it all the way down to the 16. Where the Tigers will have a first down and 10 with 9.06 to play here in the first quarter. Clock rolls. First and 10 from the Dragon 16 yard line. And Ironton breaks the huddle and gets to the line with a single setback. Two receivers bunched up on the right side. Aiden Barnes wide left. Salyers from the shotgun takes and he hands off to Carrico right up the middle. Carrico still running across the 15. He's down to the 10 yard line, still pushing the pile all the way down to the six. A lot of misdirection there in the backfield, but Carrico just moved the pile, broke a tackle, got down to the six-yard line, and Ironton has it second down and a yard to go. Seth Fawson will check in now for Cameron Deer. I never say die run that time by Carrico. You thought he was going to be down. He's twisting and turning. And a big nine-yard carry. Ironton second at about one. Single wide receiver to each side. Salyer's shotgun takes the high snap. He will hand off again to Carrico, fighting his way forward. He's down inside the five, pushing down to the four-yard line. That'll stop the clock to reset the chains, and Ironton will have it first down and go. First down and goal to go. Carrico and carry. The official spot is going to be the three-yard line. All right, with 7.51 to go, the Tigers threaten here. Bryson Thomas goes wide right. Aiden Barnes wide to the left side. The I formation. Unbalanced line to the right side. Salyers under center now. Takes the snap. Quarterback sneak right up the gut. Dives forward, and he did not get in. Gets down to the one. There is a flag in the secondary. So we're starting from the back judge. Aiding the runner. The Aiding the runner? They just dove, right? <laughs> well, it, it was more like he was behind someone else. It yeah. wasn't like somebody was behind him. Okay, so they back it up now to the nine-yard line where it'll be first down and goal from that point. That's weird. Seven and a half to play. First possession of the game for Ironson, taking over after a Fairland turnover. Interception by Gage Salyers. They'll send Aiden Barnes wide left, Bryson Thomas wide right. The eye formation again with the unbalanced line to the right side. Salyers taking, handing off to Carrico right up the middle, pushing the pile forward to the five and brought down there. They got a host of green jerseys for Fairland. Uh, in on the stop, led by Blink or Means. Second down and goal. Six carries on this drive for Rick Carrico with one carry. For Salyers. 
Pro set again. Same formation, single wide to each side, I set. Salyers under center, takes and fakes the handoff. Quarterback keeper around the left side, makes a cut up field, takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Fighting that Tigers. Salyers with a five-yard touchdown run, his first rushing touchdown of the season, and Ironton draws first blood. They lead it 6 to nothing, 6.36 to play. Nice job of riding that football into the belly of Carrico as the defense looked at him. He pulled it out and scampered into the end zone himself. It's a first score of the game. Isaac Unger on to attempt the extra point for the Tigers. Bryson Thomas is the holder. Good snap and spot. The kick is up on the way, and the kick is good. 7-0 Ironton, 636 to play in the first quarter. Back after this timeout on Fox Sports 1230 and 1420. 7-0 Ironton on top of Fairland. Unger kicking away again. This one's a high kick, and it will drive Michael Stitt back to the seven-yard line where he'll run up the middle across the 10, angles left of the 15, cuts back to the right, gets to the 20, breaks a tackle. He's off to the sideline across the 30, 35, 40, and he'll be brought down shy of midfield. Flag comes in on the play. It's either going to be a face mask or a horse collar tackle, and the Dragons will be in Ironton territory. They had him bottled up at the 20, but couldn't hold on to him, and Stitt squirts free. And he has Fairland in excellent field position to start this drive. Yeah, Stitt showing that uh, he's 5'8", a stocky player, more of about 5'7", about 160, very strong as he was able to rip free of that tackle. So penalty forthcoming against the Fighting Tigers, and the 15-yard variety. And they'll mark it all the way down to the Ironton 36-yard line. Horse collar yeah, tackle is the call. Tiger 36-yard line. All right, so Fairland in good field position. will open this drive on a first down at the Ironton 36. They'll go trips left. That's the wide side, single wide out right. Three down lineman for Ironton. It is Lambiot with a shuttle pass to Stitt on the inside. Breaks another tackle there at the 35 and stumbles down to the 31-yard line where he picks up five yards, second down and five yards to go for the Dragons. Fairland back in the line. They'll send the trips receivers to the right side this time. Single wide out left. Lambiot claps his hands, takes the shotgun snap, hands off to Stitt. He's grabbed by Fawson and thrown down at about the line of scrimmage. He'll get to the 31, and that's it. No gain. And the Dragons look at third down. Yeah, nice job by Fawson beating his man up front, getting in, making the tackle. And again, uh, Stitt, one of those players, you're going to have to not only wrap up, you're going to have to hang on and bring him down. So, again, nice tackle by Seth Fawson. All right, so a big third day. It's got to be four down territory here for the Dragons anyway. They'll send two receivers to the right in Sowards and Ramey, and two to the left in West and Hunt. Shotgun for Lambiot with Brent with Michael Stitt on his left hip there. Lambiot takes the snap from the shotgun, fires a pass to the near side. It is caught at the 30 and then out of bounds at the 29. And that is Gavin Hunt on the reception. Shy of the first down. Fourth down and a couple here for the Dragons. Close to a three-yard pickup that time. As you noted, four-down territory, obviously yeah. trailing seven to nothing. Five minutes, four seconds to play here, first quarter. It's a long three, fourth and three. Trips right, single wide out left. Ball on the left hash mark. Lambiot from the shotgun. Claps his hands, takes the snap, rolls the pocket to the right side, shuttle pass again, and this one is taken in by J.D. Brumfield. It wasn't Stitt, it was Brumfield in the backfield. He makes the catch, gets across the 25 and down to the 23 of Ironton before being tackled. First down. Short but efficient and a first down, and more important for the Dragons, it keeps the clock, or excuse me, keeps the chains moving. Again, we're getting all kinds of uh, messages on Twitter that um, broadcast is not on iHeartRadio right now. We're efforting that. We're checking that to see what the problem is. Shotgun for Fairland. Lambiot takes. Hands off to Stitt up the middle. Stitt squirts through a hole, breaks a couple of tackles. Flag comes in as he gets across the 20 and down to the Ironton 
17-yard line. Looks like a face mask against the Tigers, and it is. So that's another penalty. Count the play. Six-yard gain for Mr. Michael Stitt, plus the penalty. Moves him all the way to the 11. 7 nothing. Ironton, four and a half to play in the first quarter. Dragons driving. Single wide out to the right side, and now Fairland sending a guy on the field, now coming off the field. And Melvin Cunningham has, Cunningham has to take a timeout, and he is livid right now. Robbie McFarland wasn't out there. 7 nothing. Ironton, let's step aside for 60 seconds on Fox Sports 1230 and 1420. First and 10, Fairland. They've got the ball at the Ironton. 10-yard line, for 11-yard line. Here's the handoff. Nope, the fake. Lambiot with the keeper around the right side. He breaks a tackle there at the 10, breaks one at the 9, fights forward and gets down to about the 8, maybe the 7-yard line. Salyers and Deer come up and combine for the stop, but Lambiot has a good carry on first down to set up second down at about 4. Four minutes to play in the quarter. 7-0 Tigers on top. Ramey and Sowards go wide to the right side. It's Hunt and McFarland to the left. That's the wide side of the field. Lambiot from the shotgun. Stitt back there in the backfield with him. Snap comes back to him. It's a shuttle pass again. Stitt takes it, and he is leveled by Ethan Duncan back at about the eight-yard line. That's the third time they've run that play, and Ireton was ready for it right there, and Duncan stops Stitt for a loss of two. Third down and about five, a long five, maybe six to go. Excellent job by the Fighting Tiger defense, and I'm sure during that little mini uh, timeout there, the coaching staff said, hey, you got a wrap and tackle. You can't sit and expect to shirt tackle Mr. Stitt, and that time that was a good wrap arm tackle. Third down and about six. Lambiot lining up under center now with an offset eye in the backfield behind him. He'll take, fakes the handoff, looks to throw, swing pass out to the right side, and it's through the hands of the intended receiver, Lambiot, Caleb complete. Mullins, and it falls incomplete. Fourth down now for the Dragons. The yeah, excellent play call, as you said, just through the hands. They had first down yardage on the play, so another big fourth down offensive play coming by this Fairland Dragon football team. They trail the Tigers 7-0. We're at two minutes and 58 seconds to go in quarter number one. Wholesale changes. The Dragons are going for a field goal try. This would be a 24-yard attempt from Alec Bruce. Bruce, a freshman, 5'9", 140. Good snap back, good spot. The kick is up, on the way, and the kick is good. Alec Bruce knocks down a 24-yard field goal to put the Dragons on the board. It's 7-3, Ironton on top, and we are back after this timeout on Fox Sports 1230 and 1420. Here's the kickoff. That tails to the near side. It's going to be scooped up by Colin Freeman at the 24-yard line. Has a seam down the right sideline. Breaks a tackle. He's across midfield. There goes Colin Freeman. There is a flag back at the 27. Freeman brought down from behind at the Fairland 10-yard line. But again, there is a flag thrown on the play. And this one's probably coming back. It is. Illegal block in the back called against the Tigers. And again, the penalty bug has reared its ugly head. Ironton already with a personal foul, a face mask, and now a block in the back that wipes out a great kick return by Colin Freeman. Yeah, second, uh, second flag thrown by the head uh, official there with the white hat on. That one's going to be spotted all the way back to the 17. Tigers, the Tigers will set up first down and 10. All right, so the Tigers to the line of scrimmage in the I formation with a single wide receiver to each side of the field. The pro set, Gage Salyers under center. 
Takes the snap, tosses left side to Reed Carrico, looking for the edge, gets a good block out there, now lowers the shoulder, still moving the pile, breaks a tackle, gets across the 25 and out to the 26-yard line. That's about nine for Gate for um, Reed Carrico. Eight-yard game on Official spot the 25, so officially an eight-yard pickup by Reed. His seventh carry of the night, 31 yards. Pro set again. Ball moves to the left, hash mark. Second down and eight. Second down and two after the eight-yard game. Carrico again hit behind the line. Here comes another flag. This one's on the far side. Carrico dropped for a loss on the play of two. Sideline warning called against the Tigers. So count the play. Sideline warning against the Tigers. That'll be a loss back to the 24. Seth Fawson checking into the backfield for the Fighting Tigers. Is he is Cam Deere, yeah, Cam Deere heads, exits off the field. He has not had a carry tonight. Second down and a couple here for the Tigers. Should be third, right? Here's the handoff to Carrico. Cuts up field. He will spin forward across the 30. And he'll be brought down at the 31. Good for a first down carry. Yeah, the sideline. Marker had second down, but it should have been Number third. Five, Regardless, a third down conversion for Ironton as they get across the 30 out to the 32. 124 to play in the opening quarter. Clock rolls with Ironton leading Fairland 7-3. Officially an eight-yard pickup that time by Reed Carrico. His ninth carry on the night, 38 yards. Two receivers to the left. I formation. Here's Carrico again, right up the gut, and he gets across the 35 out to the 40 and brought down after Carrico another eight-yard gain. You had Salyers with one carry, or two carries, and the rest has been Carrico, Carrico right? yes. Uh, Gage Salyers, two carries, including that five-yard touchdown run, the Irons and score, and the uh, ten carries for Reed Carrico, who hmm. goes out of the game. Now you've got Cameron Deer and Seth Fawson lining up in an I formation. Salyers takes and hands off to Fawson, running left side. Fawson has the first down and more. He spins off a tackle, takes it across midfield, spun down at the Fairland 46-yard line. First down for the Tigers. Tevin Andrews brings him down, but Tigers move the chains, and Andrews is down on the turf. He is slow to get up right now. 21.9 seconds to play here in the first quarter. And a 7-3 Ironton, but the training staff will go out and check on Tevin Andrews. And we talked about him at the top of the broadcast, how the Fairland coaching staff was really high on him. Just a sophomore, big kid, 6'4", 295. But he's obviously in some pain right now, laying on his back. and They're checking uh, the right leg, perhaps the knee or the ankle, not sure. Yeah, Seth Fossil on that particular play. Uh, tailback? Yeah, yeah. 6'1", <laughs> about, he's listed at 235. Uh -huh. but, uh, no, no, no. But anyway, a ni nice job. Uh, as you see, see, he didn't keep it between the tackles. Where did he go? He bust outside. <laughs> he went out, off tackle he, left. He went outside, so he's got a little bit of speed. So we hope this uh, young sophomore is okay. He's going to try to put some weight. Kevin Andrews on that uh, whether it's a knee or ankle, so he's still grimacing in pain there. So. so come over here and the training staff will take a look at him and he, if he gets right back into the football yeah. game. We don't like injuries, no, especially sure when we wait 37 hours to, <laughs> right. to play, the, play the game. <laughs> he is in some pain. So now it's going to be a James Johnson on the defensive line. All right, they'll wind the clock once again. Play clock down to 18 seconds already. That, you know what? They may have to snap that ball. They're going to get a delay a game out of this because the play clock's at 6, 5, and the game clock is at 3.5. 
Oh, they just, they're going to let it run out. Into the quarter. Okay, so they let it run out. Into the quarter. 7-3, Ironton after one. Back with the second quarter after this timeout on Fox Sports 1230 and 1420. All right, we move to the second quarter. Ironton with a 7-3 lead over Fairland. They've got the football in Dragon Territory at the 46, where they're looking at first down and 10. Jason Kelly and Kevin Anthony with you on Fox Sports 1230 and 1420. Working on the iHeartRadio app issue right now. Hopefully we're back up and broadcasting here shortly on the iHeartRadio app. Ball moves to the left hash mark. The Tigers have it first down with two receivers to the left. I formation, Reed Carrico back in as the tailback. Deer is the fullback ahead. It's a handoff to Carrico who darts left, has some room across the 40. He's to the 30, down to the 25 and 20 yard line before he's brought down by Michael Stitt. And Carrico with another big carry and a first down for the Tigers. Again, excellent blocking up front on that left side to allow Carrico to get that room and then Fighting for that little extra yardage gets him all the way to the 20 yard line. First down, Fighting Tigers. Carrico stays in as the tailback. Deer, the blocking fullback in front. Two receivers to the left. That's the short side of the field. Salyers takes and fakes the handoff, looks to throw, has some time, lobs one to the corner. It is for Duncan and incomplete. It was thrown a little bit short, and McFarland was on the coverage, backpedaling and nearly picked that one off. Incomplete pass, brings up second down and 10. And Reed with that big 34 yard pickup on his 11th carry, adding to his already 46 total. He's got 11 carries, 80 yards here in the first half. Mm. Two receivers left, I formation again. Salyers taking, handing off to Carrico, up the middle, lowers the shoulder, knocks a defender over, takes it all the way down to the 10-yard line where he's close to another first down. They may spot him back at the 11, and indeed they do, just shy of the 10, and the Tigers look at third down and short. A tailback that gets to the hole, Jason, and not allowed to meet the defensive back with a shoulder. Puts his head down, fights for some extra yardage, just short of the 10, third and one for the Fighting Tigers. Bryson Thomas goes wide right, Aiden Barnes wide left. Deer and Carrico in the eye set. Salyers under center, takes the snap. Quarterback sneak right up the gut. He's got the first down as he moves the pile down close to the five yard line. Ball popped free. Fairland says they've got it. But Salyers comes out there with the football. And it's going to be first down and goal to go from the six. Five yard pickup for Gage. Three carries on the night for Mr. Salyers. 14 yards. Single wide receiver to each side of the field. I formation again, Salyers under center. Takes the snap, turns, hands to Carrico, right side, cuts up field, splits a couple of defenders, leans to the goal line, did not get in, brought down at the one. He was reaching for it, but his knee hit before the ball got across the goal line. It will be well, second down a goal from the one. 10-17 to play, clock rolls. Ironton up seven to three. And again, the ball control that the Fighting Tigers have shown here. Uh, 16 plays. Uh, basically all on the ground. Salyers quarterback sneak, and he will take it in for the score. Gage Salyers, second touchdown of the afternoon, and the Tigers now have a 13-3 lead. Again, power football for the Fighting Tigers. Uh, nothing in the air. All on the ground, 94 yards rushing here in the first half for Reed Carrico. A 16-yard run by Seth Falson, and that's the fourth carry of the game for Gage Salyers, his second touchdown run. And uh, He's got a total of 15 yards rushing himself, the point after, forthcoming. Isaac Unger on to attempt that. Good snap, good spot, low kick, and he missed it to the left. So the Tigers have a 13-3 lead with 9.56 to play in the first half. Back after this timeout on Fox Sports 1230 and 14.20. Isaac Unger ready to kick it away again for the Tigers. It is a line drive kick for the near side that hits it to 15 and rolls out of bounds. So the Dragons will take over with 9.56 to play in the first half, trailing 13 to three. Well, offense has been uh, short and forthcoming. The, the best offense they've had is 
the, the iron to the penalty on, on the, previously to put them well into Fighting Tiger territory and had to settle for a field goal to the Fairland Dragons. Since then, uh, 17 total yards in that first quarter of total offense for the Dragons. Mm -hmm. Dragons will take over first and 10 the ball. Only spotted at the 35 yards. of Fairland. And the Tiger defense has been playing pretty well. Trips left, single wide out right. Joel Lambiot back to the shotgun with a single running back on his right hip. Takes the snap, looks to throw, looks right, swings this one out to Stitt out of the backfield, makes the catch at the 30, hit by Carrico, breaks the tackle, then is knocked out of bounds at the 40. So he broke that tackle of Carrico and picked up about five yards on that swing pass. Second down. I'd give him six. And he stepped out of bounds. Well, they mark him up at the 42. Wow. All right, so seven-yard pickup, second down and three. And, and that is, that's Fairland offense right there. You have to get the football to the playmakers. Who are the playmakers? So, Sowards, excuse me, Sowards and Stitt. And once they get the ball in space, they can create and make plays. And that time you saw right there a missed tackle. And that's seven yards for uh, Mr. Stitt. So, again, those two players, more importantly, Sowards, Sowards as well as Stitt. Let's get the ball and create things for this Dragon offense. Trips left, single wide out right. Lambiot swings a pass out that way. Hunt makes the catch, then slips and falls for a big oh, loss back to run. around the initial line of scrimmage. Colin Freeman was closing quickly, and that's going to go down for a loss back to the 36-yard line. Gavin Hunt just couldn't plant that foot over there and move up field. So it's third down and nine now for the Dragons. 9.23 to play, 13-3, Ironton on top. Hunt, Sowards, and Ramey go wide to the right. Brennan West, wide left, shotgun again for Lambiot. The tailback behind him, Ironton showing blitz here, they come with it. Lambiot looking right, throws that way, the pass is tipped and nearly intercepted. Off the hands of Crabtree and Salyers well, nearly comes up with another good. pick. The pass falls to the turf incomplete, and the Dragons will have to punt. Again, pressure does wonderful things on defense. It forces the quarterback to get rid of the football sooner than he wants, and that time Tigers almost a recipient of an interception, but we'll take the good defense, so to speak, for the Tigers, and the Dragons will have to punt. Lambiot in punt formation, standing at the 23. Bryson Thomas back at the 25 of Ironton. Lambiot, pretty good punter on the season. Good snap back to him. The kick is blocked oh. by Carrico again. This one hits at the 25, rolls forward, scooped up by Grizzle. He's taking it down the left sideline, across the 15, cuts right, down to the five, and tackled inside the five-yard line. Oh, yeah. Hunter Brewer makes the touchdown saving tackle, but Carrico for the second consecutive week blocks a punt, and the Tigers have it first down and goal. Wow. Defense, 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 fighting Tigers. That's been the consistency in all three contests. This season has been defense. Last week, block punt score. This time, block punt. But somebody else picks it up and almost scampers into the end zone. So the Tigers with a short field here will have a first and goal at the, what is that, three-yard three, three yard line. Officially, the scoreboard has two. Oh, now they back it up to the three. Okay. So first down and goal from the three for the Tigers. They'll line up in the I formation. Single wide out to each side. Falson at fullback. Carrico at tailback. Salyers takes, hands off to Carrico, right side, and he darts through a hole and takes it into the end zone for the Tiger touchdown. Reed Carrico, his second rushing touchdown of the season, first of the night, and Ironton's gone up 19-3 with 8.46 to play in the first half. And on the block punt, Jason, if you're watching the game, you're thinking Carrico was in there so easily, he had to wait yeah. for the punter to get the ball. He kind of almost stood there waiting for the punter. Okay, you can punt now because I'm getting ready to block this football, and he did it so easily, and... The only thing is they couldn't find it because it was, you know, blocked so high. But nonetheless, point after. And Unger boots this one up and through, and the Tigers have a 20-3 lead with 8.46 to play in the first half. We'll be back after this timeout on Fox Sports 1230 and 1420. 
kickoff return by Michael Stitt out to the 20, or excuse me, the 34-yard line, and the Dragons will set up first down and 10, trailing 20 to three with 8:41 to play in the first half. And uh, that Tiger touchdown, one play, three yards, four seconds is all it took. Set up by a punt block again by Reed Carrico and returned by Jordan Grizzle. Trips left, single wide out right. Shotgun formation for Lambiot. Again, ball on the right hash mark. Lambiot claps his hands, takes the snap, looks left, now looks down the middle of the field, lobs one down the sideline on the right side. The pass is incomplete. There's a flag. Bryson Thomas is going to get flagged for pass interference on a pass intended for Robbie McFarland. There's some jostling, if you will, going on all down the sideline. And that 15-yard mark off will put the ball near midfield for the Dragons. The official trying to explain to uh, Bryson what he saw is that you had a hold of his jersey with holding as the football was thrown out of bounds. So even if it was close, nobody would have cut that football as it was thrown out of bounds. And nonetheless, penalty being walked off against the Fighting Tigers. Another 15-yard ride. First down. 49-yard line, just short of midfield for the Dragons. Trips left again, single wide out to the right side. Shotgun, here's Lambiot taking the snap, handing off to Stitt, running left side, looking for the edge, cuts upfield, but then is thrown to the turf by Ethan Duncan. Two flags come in, it's a face mask. I mean, Stitt's helmet came right off, so you know that a face mask is going to be called here. That's a personal foul face mask. So that's 30 yards in penalties in two plays. And this has been an issue for this team for the first two games of the season. Yeah. They had 13 penalties last week, 10 in the first half. How many did they have against Wheelersburg? Now they had a ton against Wheelersburg, too. And now oh, that's the third, if I'm not mistaken, the third 15-yard penalty called against the Tigers here in the first half. You are correct. And again, that negates a, a great defensive play yeah. of no gain with two, de two defensive uh, players right there just making the stop. So, again, this drive continues via two 15-yard penalties against the Tiger defense. Two receivers right, one left. Here is the handoff again up the middle, and I think that's Stitt, who was tackled by Seth Fawson. Brumfield, no, I'm sorry, that's Brumfield. J.D. Brumfield, 5'9", 180, and a freshman. Brought down after a short two-yard gain. So they've run this drive officially one play now, right? <laughs> yes. Officially. The other two didn't count because of the penalties. And they moved from their own 34 down to the Ironton 34. Second down, Dragons. Seven yards to go. 7.43 to play. 20 to 3. Ironton on top. Trips right, single wide out left. Lambiot from the shotgun. Claps his hands. Takes the snap. Looks to throw again. He's got time. Launches one down the middle. The pass is knocked away. Nice defensive play. Diving down by Colin Freeman. Sweet. Pass was intended for Brennan West. And Freeman... No doubt, I think he got a fingertip on that ball and knocked it into the chest of West, maybe deflecting it just a bit. Yeah, nice timing post pattern there by the Dragons. And again, you just said it, he just got that left fingertip in there just to knock it away in time, incomplete pass. I'll bring up a third down at seven and a half, timeout Ironton. Shotgun for Lambiot on third down and seven. Trips right, single wide out left. He takes a low snap, rolls the pocket to the right side, looks downfield, slips, he's hit, and dropped back at the 45-yard line. Seth Fawson just shoved Michael Stitt right back Lambiot. in to Lambiot and knocked him to the turf where the Dragons now look at fourth down and a ton. All the way back to the 43. That's a nine-yard loss for the Dragons and quarterback. Just a bulldog rush. He kept pushing his man back and back until he pushed him into the quarterback. So might as well say it, four down territory for these Fairland Dragons. The clock is running under seven minutes to play. 20 to three, they trail, and it's going to be fourth down, and it says 16. 16, so it's about close to this fourth down and 17. You, you, Lambie your punter. You might do a yeah. quick kick here on fourth down. We'll just see. Claps his hands, takes the snap. No, he's going to throw it. 
Sets up in the pocket, has some time, fires across the middle. The pass is tipped and incomplete. And looking, looking. Yeah, me too. No play. <laughs> pass was intended for Riley Sowards and falls incomplete. And the Tigers may have caught a break there. As, as they say, I saw the, the back judge with his hand on the trigger, and I thought he was going to pull it. So <laughs> Melvin will walk out himself and say, hey, uh, why did you? Okay. So Ironton takes over on downs, first down and 10 at the 43. And they have not been stopped tonight on offense. 44-yard drive and a touchdown, 83 yards and a touchdown, three-yard drive and a touchdown. If the offense is saying they need one more. Okay. Here comes Cameron Deer. Lucky, lucky for them, the play clock hadn't started yet. So right now, 22, 21 seconds. So. All right, they'll break the huddle and line up in the I formation with two receivers going to the wide side right. Salyers under center. Gage takes, swings this one out to the right side to Thomas, who makes the catch, cuts up field across the 45-50. He's to the 45 and spun down at the Fairland 43-yard line by Zeke Ramey. I guess that goes down as a run, technically, right? I mean, that throw that was thrown behind the line, so. Correct. It will go down as a run. Fairland takes a timeout. And they are at the line of scrimmage. Fairland hustles back out there as well. Now, Tevin Andrews is back on the field, by the way, for Fairland. So it's good to see him just shaking up a little bit a couple of series ago. But he's back on the field now. Gage Salyers under center with an I formation. There's movement at the line. And another five-yard penalty called against the Tigers. Ball start against the Tigers. Duncan shot out of his tight end spot just a step too quick, and it'll be first down and 15. And that's something that Coach Trevin Pendleton's talked about for a few weeks. He can't play behind the chains. First down and 15, ball back to the 48-yard line. The Dragons received the opening kickoff, so the Irons and the Fighting Tigers, number one, does not want to shoot themselves in the foot and find themselves way back in defense, way back in territory trying to punt this ball away, but more or less eat this clock, get points up. First and 15. Two receivers right, I said again. Here's the handoff to Carrico up the middle. Carrico is hit Carrico at the 45, spun down to the 43-yard line. And it's going to be J.D. Brumfield, the linebacker bringing him down after a five-yard pickup, setting up second down and 10 yards to go. Back to the original line of scrimmage, just uh, straight up the gut running for the Fighting Tigers. Again, they attempted one pass here in this first half, and everything else has been uh, rushing the football. Two receivers right, same set, high formation. Salyers taking, looking to throw again. He'll pump fake, now airs it out long down the right sideline. The pass is going to be tipped, intended for Hacker. Trent Hacker. Sophomore, 6'2", wide receiver. Had this one just a little too high for him. He couldn't come up with a reception. Now Ironton looks at third down and 10. A little too high and had him backpedaling there as uh, the ball was a little late getting to him. Uh, Hacker, a uh, high jump specialist on the track and field team. So obviously if you get him in position, he can go up and get that back. Go up and get football. that football. Yeah. Go up and get that football, yes. Yeah. Jordan Grizzles in as a slot receiver to the left. Two receivers that way, one to the right. Salyers from the shotgun, takes the snap, looks to throw. Here comes the pressure. He's going to throw across the middle. It is caught. Oh, it hit him right in the hands. It was Hacker again. He was running a crossing route, and it hit him in the hands of the 40. Couldn't come up with a catch. Robbie McFarland on the coverage defensively, and it's fourth and ten. The Tiger punt team will come out on the field. Nice job by uh, Gage that time. Uh, to step in and find the open receiver, but again, unable to haul it in or bring up that fourth down. And Duncan will come in to punt, 5.36 to play, so Fairland looking for something positive to take in with him at half. And Duncan at the 44, good snap back to him. He'll kick this one away. It's a wobbler to the right sideline. This one goes out of bounds, and that's a, ouch. Um, let's see where they mark it. Right at the 26-yard line. That's a 14-yard punt.
So the Dragons will take over. First down and 10, keeping Ironton out of the end zone for the first time tonight. 5.29 to go in the first half. Again, offensively, the longest offensive play for these Dragons in this first half has been a seven-yard pass play. Other than that, three 15-yard penalties courtesy of the Fighting Tiger defense. So right now they've got plenty of time uh, to mount some type of offensive uh, uh, mount here as they trail 20-3. Trips right, single wide out left. Handoff goes up the middle to Stitt, who spins off attack with the line of scrimmage, brought down from behind by Crabtree after he crosses the 30 and gets to the 34. Got an eight-yard pickup there for Michael Stitt. And again, no wrapping and tackling, just a helmet on shoulder pads, and away he goes for an eight-yard gain. He's a yards-after-hit kind of yeah. runner. Yeah. Tough to bring down, that's for sure. They'll send two receivers each way, will the Dragons. Lambiot again from the shotgun on second down and two. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, quarterback keeper, right side. There's another face mask. That's a personal foul face mask again. Gunner Crawford, guilty of that one. So that's another big penalty against the Tigers. Crawford replaced in the lineup by Hunter Humphreys now. Personal foul face mask against the Tigers. Yep, marks the ball into Ironton territory at the 45. Four 15-yard penalties here in the first half. 447 to go, trips left. Lambiot in the shotgun, takes the snap, looks to throw, swings this one out to Stitt on the right side, who makes the catch across midfield, breaks a tackle. Here comes a flag. That's going to be a block in the back called against Fairland. Hunter Humphreys brings down Stitt at the 44. But it looked like... Brennan West blocked Reed Carrico in the back. Second penalty of the Knights. Personal foul earlier, I think, in the first quarter against the Dragons. This will be their second penalty of the game. We're asking Iron if they want to, asking Ironson if they want to take the play or the penalty. You're going to take that penalty because it's going to be second down and eight, second and nine. Moving back. So it goes back into Fairland territory. Trips left, single wide out right. Lambie out from the shotgun, quarterback sneak. Tries to run left, cuts back to the right, breaks two tackles, is hit by Bryson Thomas and drags him forward across the 45 out to the 46-yard line. He'll get about three, but could have been brought down for no gain. Second down and long for the Dragons as we hit the four-minute mark here in the second quarter, 20 to three, Ironson on top. Yeah, you can see on the effort of that tackle, the Fighting Tiger players kind of be careful and reaching to where they're reaching yeah. because of so many face mask penalties they've had tonight or this evening and uh, second down and still a bunch. Second and 18 for the Dragons. 3.44 to play in the first half. Ironton 20, Fairland 3. Lambiot takes the shotgun snap, looks left, throws that way. The pass is going to be caught and that is Reed Ramey who makes the catch, then gets past the initial line of scrimmage to the Ironton 44 yard line and Puts Fairland in a third down, a more manageable situation now. Third down at about nine. Picking up nine on that pass play. Tigers up 20 to three. They'll send a single wide receiver left in Brennan West. Trips to the right, Lambie out from the shotgun. And Michael Stitt back there with him, but Tigers take a timeout here to set their defense with 3.04 to play in the first half, 20 to three. Ironton leading the Fairland Dragons. Found open receivers, so here we go with third and nine to go for the Dragons. Trips right, single wide out left. Lambiot takes the snap, looks right, and pump fakes a couple of times, throws this one long down the near side, has a man open, but can't connect. That was Gavin Hunt, wide open. Gage Salyers had to close quickly 
and try to swat that one away, but Gavin Hunt diving down at about the 10, to maybe the 10 to the five yard line, couldn't come up with it. It's fourth down to nine. Don't talk about time. Lambiot had plenty of time as on the defensive end on Fawson's side, he had two guys on him, so he was unable to get to the quarterback and nothing on the other side, so Lambiot able to step in, set and throw and almost had a big gain on yeah. the play. So fourth down and four. Again, when you give good quarterbacks time to throw, they're gonna find somebody and they're going to complete that pass. So Tigers uh, right now rushing three. Yep, dropping eight. Lambiot again, shotgun, takes the snap. Here comes the pressure now. He eludes that. He's going to run with it. He's across the 40, breaks the tackle, 35-30. He's to the 25, moves right down to the 20. Here comes another flag, and that's going to be another face mask called against the Tigers. It's all the way down to the 19-yard line, and you'll mark it half the distance to the goal, and you'll be looking at first down and goal to go for the Dragons. They're going to spread the field. This time to get a little bit of pressure on him, and he's an athlete, and he takes off running. About a 25-yard gain. Face mask against the Tigers. Five-yard face mask. But still, it's first down and 10 for Fairland at the Ironton 14-yard line. Just a, just a graze on the face, but nonetheless, a penalty. The drive continues, 2.47 to play, uh, and the spot at the 14. And team from the entire 14-yard line. 2.46, clock rolls. Phelan breaks the huddle and sends two receivers left, and West and Hunt, McFarlane and Ramey go to the right side. Or Sowards, I'm sorry. Lambiot taking, handing off to Stitt, who is leveled. That's, a, I'm sorry, that's a J.D. Brumfield, who has picked up and thrown to the turf by Seth Fawson. That 16-yard line. Yep, that's going to be a loss on the play. Second down and 12. He got our uh, Monroe's frame and collision, big collision of the game last week. It, he had, uh, as they say, one guy blocking him on that play. So yeah. No match. Nope. West and Hunt go to the left again. Ramey and Sowers to the right side. Lambiot from the shotgun, takes the snap, looks to throw. Looking left, throwing that way. The pass is going to be caught at the 10 by oh, Brennan West, West immediately tackled out of bounds wow. at about the nine. Yeah. So the Dragons will look at third down. And about four. Well, they say he was tackled inbounds, so the clock keeps rolling. 90 seconds to play in the first half, 20 to three, Ironton on top. Third down and a long four. Lambiot from the shotgun. Takes the snap, looks to throw. He pump fakes, now throws to the right side. The pass is incomplete. Jordan Grizzle on the coverage on the pass that was intended at the five-yard line for Riley Sowards. And the Dragons now look at fourth down. And five to go. Again, if you like what you see, you're going to go ahead and run a play. But if you don't, you want to get points. So. They try to get points on the board, so they will send the field goal team out, and Alec Bruce will attempt another one. He's already kicked one, 24-yard try. This one will be a 25-yarder. Gavin Hunt is the holder from the left hash mark. Good snap, good spot. The kick is up on the way, and the kick is no good. He missed it to the yeah, left. No so Ironton will take over at the 20 after the missed field goal with a minute five to go. They got two timeouts and 80 yards to go, right? We'll spread the field. Thomas and Duncan wide left, Barnes wide right. Carrico in the backfield with Gage Salyers from the shotgun. Salyers takes, turns, hands off to Carrico. Up the middle, spins off a tackler. Here comes another flag. Carrico breaks another one. He's across the 40. He's across midfield. He is all the way down to the 40, 30, to the 20. 10, 5, and into the end zone, but this one's coming back. There's a flag back at the 23. Carrico, beast mode, goes 80 yards for the score, but again, penalties. It's a personal foul chop block against the Tigers. So another personal foul penalty. 
and Carrico runs 80 yards for nothing. This team has got to clean up those penalties. So again, a, a highlight run negated by the Carrico obviously is going to need a breather after running yeah. that uh, 80 yard sprint. Cameron Deer checks in. We're down to 48.4 seconds to play. And it's going to be first down and 20 all the way back at the, oh, no, not 20, first and 18. They mark it back to the 12. So now you're just, at this point, run the ball, take it to the locker room at the half. Shotgun formation for Salyers. Again, Deers back there with him. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, and it is going to be a quarterback keeper around the left side. Salyers gets a block, breaks a tackle there at the 20, spun down at the 25. 39, 38 seconds. Clock continuing to roll, second down for the Tigers. And they're not in any hurry whatsoever. Now there they break the huddle and get to the line. They'll send two receivers right, one left. Second down and six, clock down to 20 seconds. 19 and 18, Salyers takes the shotgun snap. Looks right, looks left. He's going to lob one to the center. Here comes another flag, two flags. The pass was complete to Aiden Barnes and he's brought down at the 35 yard line by J.D. Brumfield. And here we get two flags and we're going to get a Offsetting penalty, perhaps? Holding called against the Tigers. Holding against the Tigers. Personal foul, blow to the head, called against the Dragons. Personal foul against the Offsetting Dragons. penalties. Offset. And replay, replay the down. down. Now, last week we saw a holding and a personal foul, both in force. 15 yard back, 10 yards forward. At Russell. Saw that a couple of times. 7.9 seconds to play. Second down and six. Tigers to the line. Looks like they'll just take a knee here. Gage under center. Takes the snap. Drops back. Drops to a knee. And that'll do it for the first half. Tigers have a 20-3 lead. Could be more. Penalties another factor in the first half for Ironton. But they're up by 17 at the break. 20-3 is the score at halftime. We're back after this timeout with our halftime report powered by Auto Styles here on Fox Sports 1230 and 1420. Colin Freeman, Cameron Deer dropping back to receive the kick. Freshman kicker, Alec Bruce has the ball teed up at the 40, kicking off from right to left as we get ready to start the second half. All right, here we go. Referee back at the goal line, surveys the field, blows the whistle. Second half, ready to get underway. Here's the kick. It is down the middle of the field, and it's going to be fielded by Carrico at the 20, running up the middle, 25-30, out to the 35, pushing, spinning, and he'll be brought down at the 37-yard line. And that's where Ironson will set up. First down and 10, first drive of the second half. Again, every drive but the last one. Well, I, I don't guess you can count the last one because it was just the last Tasty minute, but the they had a, a punt there in the second quarter. Tiger set up so, for the most part, Ironton very Tiger successful on the ground against this Fairland Dragon defense, and they got it first and 10 at 37. See if they'll do the same to start the half here. Spread the field with two receivers to each side of the field. Salyers in the shotgun. Carrico takes one step up to the right side of Gage. He takes the shotgun snap, hands off to Carrico up the middle, and Carrico Fairland's all over Gage. that. Flag. Flag, and there's another one on well, the far side. Play. You got one on the sideline here, right? Yeah. And then one here. So there's a face mask called against personal foul face mask against the Dragons. Personal foul face mask. You got to tackle Carrico somehow. Yeah. And they, did, they didn't do it that well in the first half. So. 
I guess it wasn't a flag on the far side. I thought I saw one. Well, Coach Trevin Pendleton has something in his hand. Looks like a flag. It is. So they had two flags. There was one dropped on the sideline. One dropped, yeah. Okay. So you have two. Did they carry two flags? I don't think I've seen an official carry two, two flags. flags. I know. Usually it's a hat, though. If, they, if there's two yeah. penalties, a, a flag and then the hat. So. Penalty. So and marks it into Fairland territory to the 47-yard line where the Tigers have it first down and 10. Two receivers right, one left. Salyers from the shotgun again. Fawson now in the backfield, moves up to the right side of Gage. Salyers from the shotgun, takes and hands off to Fawson, running left side. Fairland strings it out, and Lambiot just spins him out of bounds there at the line of scrimmage. Fawson ball carrier. Looks like a, a waltz, One perhaps. Some yeah. kind of ballroom dance with the spin and the pirouette right to the sideline. No gain on the play, no gain on the play second, second down, down and 10. Cameron Deer back in. Jordan Grizzle heads to the sideline. And Fawson that time trying to bounce it outside and instead of using that power, and just uh, busting it inside between the tackles. And then the last second and 10. High formation. Pro set, single wide out to each side. Here's Fawson getting the carry. Stiff arms a defender, stiff arms another, and then is hit behind the line of scrimmage and brought down at the 48. Oh, Apparently yeah, closed on that one quickly. And a couple of green shirts over there bringing Fawson down after a couple of nice stiff arms. Third down, they say no gain on the play. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Third down and 10 from the Fairland 47. Big third down play here for the Fairland defense. If they can come up with a stop and get the football back, they may have a little momentum. And again, your fullback getting caught moving east to west instead of north and south, if you will. So like you said, big third down play coming up for these Dragons who haven't had a lot to smile about on defense this afternoon. 10-36, we're in the second half. Ironton 20, Fairland 3. Bryce Munyon is in as a slot receiver to the right side. Two receivers each way, and Coach, or excuse me, uh, Gage Salyer signals yeah, for a timeout. Did he get it before the play clock hit zero? It is a delay of game. They did not get the timeout before the play clock hit zero, so now it's third down and 15. Ball back into Ironton territory to the 48 yard line. Understand it's raining now in Ironton. So it may be sitting here in Proctorville soon. We don't know. Just have to wait it out and see. Tigerson trips left. Single wide receiver right is Bryson Thomas. And it, it you heard, you may have been able to hear the coaching uh, staff up here in the booth next to us said timeout, timeout. They didn't have the right personnel or had the right formation or whatever. Ten minutes to play in the third quarter. 20 to 3. Ironton quickly back to the line of scrimmage. They'll send Trent Hacker and Reed Carrico wide to the left side. Jordan Grizzle, Bryson Thomas wide right. Empty backfield for Gage Salyers. Fairland with a four man front. Salyers from the shotgun. Takes the snap. Looks left. He's going to throw to the sideline. The pass is going to be incomplete, intended for Trent Hacker. That was well shy of the first down marker anyway. Michael Stitt on the coverage defensively, and the Tigers now have it fourth down and 15. Looks like he's going to have a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with uh, Reed Carrico streaking down the left sideline. But that, that, of course, was him streaking down to give uh, that receiver an opportunity to catch and make a run. But nonetheless, fourth down opportunity. As the defense of the Dragons held the Fighting Tiger offense. That, that referee umpire just moved the ball back a yard. I'm not sure why he did that, but it's fourth down. Punt team comes onto the field. Duncan will kick it away. This kick is a high Ooh, wobbler to the sideline off the side of his foot, and it hits huh. in the fourth row of the uh, running lane on the track. They'll line this one up at the Fairland 41, so they've got great field position to start this drive. It looked promising for the Tigers after the penalty, yeah, but the 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 they get nothing out of it. Fairland will take over first down and 10, 9.48 to play in the third quarter. They trail at 20 to three. Good opportunity here for the Dragons to kind of get that offense going. It has uh, nothing, nothing the entire game. Again, uh, and again, uh, you know, one of their main playmakers, uh, unable 
not making a catch there in that first half. And Ali Sowers, see if he can get involved here. Gavin Hunt goes in motion to the right side. Lambia takes the shotgun snap, screen pass to Stitt out here on the near side, makes the catch, tries to cut upfield, slips and falls just past the line of scrimmage and falls down at the 43-yard line. Second down and about nine. And again, that's, that's what this offense is designed to do, not to make big plays downfield, but to get the ball to their playmakers and have them make plays. And uh, Stitt that time had running room, but he slipped and fell, a short two and a half, three yard gain. So second and seven for the Dragons. Two receivers right, two to the left. Ball on the left hash mark. Lambiot takes the snap. Ironton coming with some pressure. Fairland picks it up. Lambiot rolling to the right side, breaks a tackle. He moves to the right across the 45, breaks another tackle across midfield and runs out of bounds after getting the first down at the Ironton 49. So the Dragons have a little bit of life here in the early goings of the second half. Now they trailed uh, Athens last week, 14-0, I believe, before mounting a comeback and getting that win. Eight-yard pickup for the Another scrambling game. quarterback, Lambia, as you hear the announcer, first down. They'll go no huddle. Trips left, single wide out right. Lambia shotgun. Stitt back there with him. Takes the snap, hands off to Stitt, hit at the line, and this time they wrap him up and bring him down at the midfield stripe. Reed Carrico on the tackle, loss of one back to midfield. And that time defensive penetration ready to make a tackle and grab for the Fighting Tigers. Is that a number 15 or 45 I see in there for the Fighting Tigers? I think tigers. 15. I, I don't have a 15, so I'll have to check on that. Three-man front again for the Tigers as Fairland breaks the huddle and sends three left, one right. Lambiot from the shotgun, claps his hands once, takes the snap, flags. Wow. Procedure wow. called against Fairland. Start They'll back the it up five yards and look at second down and 16 now. Well, we have a minute. Do want to say that the Ironton Student Council is sponsoring the Powder Puff football game. October 4th at 6.30 at Tanks Memorial Stadium. The freshmen and seniors will play the sophomores and junior girls. Hey, they have, uh, you and I are the honorary captain, so I have the freshmen and the seniors. <laughs> right. All the proceeds go to the Christmas food baskets the council dispenses during the holiday season. Shotgun again for Lambiot, two receivers right, takes the snap. Has time to throw, launches one, a corner route down the left sideline. It's overthrown, intended for Riley Sowards and falls incomplete. Yeah, Colin Freeman on the coverage Sowers defensively, incomplete. and the Dragons will look at third down and 16. Yeah, you haven't said that often, though. intended for Riley yeah. Sowards. And again, that's a, a playmaker guy. That, uh, he was the one that caught the touchdown pass last year to win yep. the game at Ironton. So another big third down play for the Fighting Tigers. Defense, that is, and the Trail and Dragons again. Trailing 20 to three, we're in the third quarter, 7.57 to play. Two receivers to each side of the field, ball just inside the right hash mark. Lambiot from the shotgun again, takes the snap. Sets up in the pocket, fires right, the pass is thrown incomplete. Thrown Number behind Sowards and we're Zeke Ramey. And now the Dragons will send the punt team on the field with fourth down and 16 coming up. Yeah, the timing pattern just, just not there for the Dragons. Uh, that time was three, four-step drop and get rid of the football, but the receiver had not come out of his run yet. So timing is everything. And, of course, pre preparation is everything. As maybe last night that play would have went well, but an extra day of, of just waiting around to play football, no. Yeah. Lambiot is the punter, standing at the 32. Ironton nearly jumped in the neutral zone there. Lambiot takes the snap, one step, and kicks it away. End over end kick. It will go away from Bryson Thomas. Hits at the third, uh, 25. Takes an Ironton, or a Fairland roll, I'm sorry, inside the 20, and down at about the 17. So that's where the Tigers will set up first down and 10, still leading 20 to 3, with 7.41 to play in the third quarter. Tiger defense once again holds, forces the Dragons to punt the football. 
They'll have the drive, their drive start deep in their own territory at the 17. And Brett High School, like to give congratulations to Riley Sowers on being named the Tyler Haslam Law Office Football Player of the Week. First down and 10 for the Tigers. 108 yards and two touchdowns last week against Athens. Again from the 17. The PA announcer just announces Riley Sowers as the player of the week from last week. Yeah. He's been held catchless, if you will, in this uh, first half. And it's got to be one of the reasons the Tigers are on top, 20 to 3. And here we go. A little possession here in the second half. Toss sweep comes to the near side to Reed Carrico. Makes a cut across the 20, 25, 30. Still on his feet, dragging defenders with him. He drags two defenders with him seven yards and gets out to the 42 and has a first down for the Tigers. My goodness. 25 yards for the young fellow. He's a workhorse for the Tigers tonight. And if you didn't know, he's only a sophomore. Yes, lady. indeed. Yeah, plenty of football left in that uh, tank, if you will. Ohio State leading Rutgers now 52 to 3. Two receivers go right. Cameron Deer, Aiden Barnes, Bryson Thomas wide to the left. Shotgun formation for Salyers. Carrico behind him. Salyers looks to throw. Sets up a screen. Carrico makes the catch at the 42. Cuts right across midfield. He's to the 45 to the 40. Has a first down for the Tigers in Fairland territory and spun Sorry, down five, right on the 40-yard line. Tigers move the chains again as Michael Stitt makes the stop for the Dragons. 18-yard completion between... Sires to Carrico on the screen. First completed pass and first catch, if you will, by a fighting Tiger this afternoon. Or can I say this evening yet? It's yeah, 640. It's tonight. It. It's tonight. Okay. Yep. Carrico gets a breather, heads to the sideline. Placed by Cameron Deer in the backfield. Jordan Grizzle checks into the lineup. He'll be a wide out to the left side. Sires. From the shotgun, takes and hands off to Cameron Deer, running up the middle. Deer gets down across the 35 and brought down at the 34-yard line. About a six-yard pickup for the sophomore, Cameron Deer. First carry of the game, six yards. If you ever run into Cam Deer in Walmart or anywhere, he's probably the nicest football player you'll ever meet. Yes, sir. No, sir. How are you doing, sir? And he always smiles when he talks to you, so... That's your Cameron Deer moment right there. But when he's on the football field, oh yeah, he mean. He's nasty. So listen, he, I know you weren't <laughs> at the game last week, but you should have seen the hit he put on the uh, Russell quarterback a week so, ago. That's, My word. That's a night and day guy. You put the football uniform on, he's just mean and nasty. You see him in the civilian attire, if you will, and Rock he's a church-going great kid. The, so. the, the official. Signal for an official timeout, and I'm not really sure why. And he's looking for something, maybe? Yeah, it, it appears that's the case. They're all looking around on the turf for something. Is it a whistle? Is it a. I mean, if you're looking for a contact lens, you might as well forget it out there. Coach Pendleton's like, hey, uh, that's uh, slow. He's stopping momentum. <laughs> yeah. A little free timeout for something. Okay. Well, maybe uh, now one of the officials here is he's picked up something. Uh, is that, uh, is that the clock? <laughs> well, they sent both teams to the sidelines right now. Something, something of the officials has malfunctioned, yeah. so. Maybe it's the, uh, the guy that's keeping the clock. Maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe lost a battery out of the thing and it's not working and that's what they're looking for. Coaches are out scouring the field and the officials are as well. Yeah, I, we were making just, such good time. I know, man. Just <laughs> add some more weirdness to this game. <laughs> I guess they're just going to forget about it and play. I see a battery. Um, 
It's a triple A. It's a triple A. Duracell. And that's the same guy that was looking for the lightning last night, by the yes. way. Yes. Had to stopwatch on that. Second down here for the Tigers. Five yards to go from the Fairland 35 clock rolls as we approach the six-minute mark here in the third quarter. Ironson up 20 to three. Here's Cameron Deer getting the carry again. Deer Wraps up the here. football, lowers the shoulder, and dives down near the 30, which is close to a first down. He'll be spotted with the nose of the football touching the 30, and I think we're going to have a measurement. We're waiting for the referee to come over and look, and he gets up there and says, yeah, why, why not? Let's bring the chains out. Oh, for a All right, so they bring the chains out, stretch it, and see if the Tigers do pick up a first down on a couple of runs by Cameron Deer. So mark it, stretch it, drop it. Short by Just shy. That much. Yep. So it's third and inches for the Tigers. Officially it goes down as third down as one. Not a whole lot of noise on this side. And the Fairland fans haven't had a whole lot to cheer about tonight. You look around, we see uh, quite a few folks in the orange and black sitting on this side over here. Got three tents popped up across the way, guarding against the rain. Third down and inches. I formation, the pro set. Salyers, quarterback sneak, has the first down and more as he takes it across the 25 and right down at the 24-yard line getting a block from Hunter Humphreys up the middle. And the Tigers move the chains again, first down and 10. Six carries on the night for Gates Sires for 20. Reed Carrico, who's getting a breather on the sideline right now as we get close to that fourth quarter. Sitting with 16 carries and 127 and a three-yard touchdown run. Colin Freeman in the game. He'll be a wide out to the left side. Aiden Barnes wide right. High formation, Duncan the fullback now. Deer, the tailback. It's going to be a fake handoff. Nope, handoff to Deer. It looked like maybe Salyers tried to pull that one back, but Deer fights his way down to the 20-yard line and gets four yards and keeps the clock rolling as we are under five minutes to play now in the third quarter. Ironton's controlled this one from the outset, leading 20-3. to three. A couple of rushing touchdowns from Gage Salyers, one from Reed Carrico. Carrico also has a block punt. He's gone over 100 yards rushing. And the Tigers are over 100 yards in penalties, I think. Yes. Pro set, eye formation, Salyers under center, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, quarterback keeper as he tries to jump over the pile. It's a little elevation and is brought down on his back at the 15-yard line, just outside the 15. Third down coming up for Ironton. Here comes Seth Fawson into the lineup. Cameron Deer goes out. You think the big man gets the carry here? I would say so. And I'm going to guess that he goes straight ahead. With Duncan as the blocking back? I would think so, too. Unbalanced line to the right side. It is Fawson who lowers the shoulder, moves the pile, still on his feet, brought down at the 13. Fawson and that looks to be good enough for a first now. It is. And they'll move the chains again. Fawson's fourth carry of the night, 19 yards. Let's see if he remains in a tailback with Duncan as his fullback. Duncan's been playing tight end this year, but we know that he can run the football as well. He'll be a fullback once again. No measure? Well, they just they <laughs> signal first down. Yeah, they wasn't they weren't sure, you know. Um, the chain game was probably complaining that they're not getting enough work. So. Second measurement. All right, they'll stretch it out. And Let's see if we can get one. It time. is a first down by half the football. Down, yes. See, we told you. <laughs> Ironton's at home next week. First home game of the 2018 season. They'll play, I'm going to say it, the best team in the Tri-State. Ashland Tomcats will come to town. They blitzed Russell last night. And they have um, 
Braxton Ratliff, the quarterback, who is an outstanding quarterback. It's going to be tough for the Tigers to slow him down, but they're up for the challenge again next week. 7.30 kickoff with Ironton Ashland next week at the tank. Should be a packed house, no doubt. Colin Freeman will be the wide receiver to the left. Aiden Barnes goes wide right. I formation with Duncan at fullback, Fawson at tailback. Salyers under center, fakes the handoff, looks to throw, fires a pass behind Colin Freeman and incomplete. Second down and 10. Freeman doing a slant pattern, and that pass was thrown behind him. And it's now second down and 10. Six opportunities to throw the football for Gage Salyers tonight. He's completed one. And that was to Reed Carrico. Jordan Grizzle in, and Ethan Duncan will go out. Clock stopped at 314 on the incompletion. Aiden Barnes, wide receiver to the left side. Two receivers bunched up on the right end. And Fawson the lone tailback. Salyers rolling the pocket at the right side, fires a pass out to Bryce Munyon, who makes the catch. He's knocked out of bounds at about the 10-yard line. First catch for Bryce Munyon. J.D. Brumfield on the stop. Munyon, 5'9", 150 pound junior, makes the reception. Gain of three brings up third down and seven. I guess I'm saying one out of bounds, so the nope, clock gonna roll, clock gonna stop. Yep. Yeah, stop. 3.09, third down and a long six for the Tigers. Reed Carrico's rest is over. Back in, replacing Fawson. 20 to three, Ironson on top. Play clock down to five seconds. Salyers in the shotgun. Play clock now down to two and one. He just does get the snap off. Quarterback keeper around the left side looking for a block. Cuts up field. He'll take it into the end zone for the touchdown. Third rushing touchdown of the night for Gage Salyers, and the Tigers now lead it 26 to three with 3.02 to play. They had the most excellent lead blocker in Reed Carrico with the escorts into the end zone and the score at the 3.02 mark of the third quarter. This uh, third, yep, third yep. touchdown of the night. 11 plays, 83 yards in that drive from Ironton. And Isaac Unger's on to attempt the extra point. Good snap, good spot, good kick. 3.02 to play, third quarter, 27 to three. Ironton back after this timeout on Fox Sports 12:30 and 14:20. Isaac Unger ready to kick it away for the Tigers, who now lead it 27-3 with 3.02 to play in the third quarter. Unger kicking from left to right. Stitt deep to receive. This is a high kick. Good kick by Unger, driving Stitt back to the one-yard line. Stitt running left across the 5, the 10, looking for some room. He'll bounce outside of the 15. He's to the 20. Moves left again to the 25-30, now cuts back right out to the 35-yard line, and he'll be brought down at the 36. So a nice return there by Stitt after he took that one in at the one. Dragons offense uh, inconsistent and held that way primarily because of the Fighting Tiger defense, that front three and sometimes four when they rush. Someone from the outside has been very tenacious. Yeah, someone I thought they were trying to throw it up here. I, yeah. Footballs are the cheerleaders. So Lambiot brings that offense back out. It's third quarter, 248. So far, his offense has put up three points for the game. Trips right, single wide out left. Lambiot from the shotgun. Ball on the left hash mark. Takes the snap. Looks downfield, has time, fires across the middle. The pass is caught. Climbing the ladder to make that reception is Robbie McFarland, and he's going to be brought down shy of midfield, or are they going to give him the strike? It looks like they'll give him the midfield strike and a pass completion of 15 yards. 15 yard first down, first down. down for the Dragons. Crossing route there for McFarland. The Dragons move the chains. Same formation, trips right, single wide out left. Lambiot from the shotgun. Tigers with three down linemen. Lambiot with the quarterback keeper. He will run left, breaks a tackle across the 45-40 to the 35-30 and dragged down from behind by Crabtree all the way down at the Ironton 27. So two plays, and the Dragons are down inside the Ironton 30. Hustling to the line of scrimmage in the no-huddle offense as we wind our way down to two minutes and 23 seconds to play in the third quarter. 
Ironton is up 27 to three. And Tigers have to take a timeout. They are getting players off the field and trying to get the right guys on the field. And look like um, Crabtree stopped, maybe had a cramp, but then got up and tried to get off the field, but they take a timeout. Shotgun for Lambiot, trips right, single wide out left, takes the snap, quarterback keeper again. Same play as he bounces left, takes it to the 20, to the 15, tiptoeing down the sideline and gets close to the 10-yard line. Guess they've seen something they like in that play because, again, back-to-back -back plays. Lambiot has run the quarterback keeper, and he is getting close to a first down and goal to go situation. They back it up to the 12, where Fairland will have it first down and 10. 2.09 to play. 33 yards rushing on his first seven carries. He's got 38 on his previous two. Crawford and Fawson switching ends on the defensive side. Now they switch it back. Lambiot again from the shotgun. Hands off to Stitt. Breaks a tackle there at the line. Moves left, and he's going to take this one in for the touchdown. Another broken tackle, and Michael Stitt gets Fairland's first touchdown of the night. It's now 27-9. That was pretty loud. And again, uh, somewhat poor tackling by the Tigers up front. And again, you can't do that to a Michael Stitt who, again, relies on yards after contact. And he showed you right there what he can do after contact. Scampers in for a 12-yard score. The kick is up. And it's good. 27 to 10. Ironton still by 17. A minute 55 to play in the third quarter. Back after this timeout on Fox Sports 1230 and 1420. Failing, not rolling over and giving up yet. Scored a touchdown pretty quickly. Four plays, 65 yards in less than a minute. Michael Stitt's 12 yard touchdown run and a point kick by Alec Bruce makes it 27 to 10 with a minute 55 to go. And the Dragons will kick off here as Bruce will pooch kick this one down the middle of the field. It will take a couple of bounces and Tigers will jump on it at the 34. Fawson came up to catch it, then thought, yeah, I can't catch that. I'm just going to move out of the way. And it was jumped on back there by Jacob Sloan. Kick recovered by number nine, Jacob Sloan. Now hang on a second. Do we just have a minute 55 left? 204. 204? 204, yeah. All right. We're at 155. 204. Ironton takes over first down and 10 from the 33. 202 to play in the third quarter. Shotgun formation for Gage Salyers. Single wide receiver left, two to the right. One running back, and that running back is Reed Carrico. He gets the carry up the middle. Nice spin move at the 40-yard line. He'll have a first down there as he takes it across here. the 45 and gets out to the 47. Right down by 14 Lambia. yards for Reed Carrico. What's his total now? He is 141. Okay. 141. It's in Trent Hacker wide left, Jordan Grizzle in a slot right, Bryson Thomas wide right. Carrico moves to the left side of Gage Salyers in the shotgun and takes the snap. Here comes the pressure. He rolls right, breaks a tackle, looks downfield, fires to the sideline. Thomas makes the catch at the 29-yard line and gets out of bounds. Flag on the play. Okay. That's illegal receiver downfield, maybe. It is. An eligible receiver downfield. So Inelible you wipe off a, another pass Tigers. play of, what was that, almost 30 yards yep. and an 80-yard touchdown run because of penalties. Hmm. Ten penalties totaling 100 yards in the first half. This will be the second penalty of the second half. So it's first down and 15. Hmm. 
Trent Hacker, Reed Carrico, wide to the left side. You got two receivers right, Jordan Grizzle and Bryson Thomas, empty backfield. Fairland showing blitz with Carrico in the shotgun, and here they come with it around the edge. Carrico steps up in the pocket, moves left, lobs one. The pass is caught by Jordan Grizzle at midfield, heads to the sideline. He gets a great block from Reed Carrico on the sideline, and Grizzle goes out of bounds after picking up a first down down at the 40 yard line. I think that's your uh, hit of the uh, game, that block. Could be, <laughs> could be. Wow. You know, he. I was talking with Coach Pendleton earlier this week, and uh, we were talking about the big hits. And one we didn't even see last week was on a kick return, and Reed Carrico sent somebody on a cartwheel on a great block. And he got the big hit from the team watching the films on that, but we didn't even see that um, on the kick return. So he gets another one there. First and ten Tigers. And Carrico gets the carry up the middle. He is still moving the pile There's down the inside the 35 and takes it all the way to the 32-yard line. We see the umbrellas start to pop yeah, open here on the near side. As Carrico picks up eight, clock is down to 45 seconds to play in the quarter. Set the... Uh, I think instead of 15, or they put up actually they put up 30 minutes in that third quarter. It was the longest third quarter yeah, in the history. I think of you're right. <laughs> Two receivers right, one left. Fawson now in the backfield on the left side of Carrico, and he'll get the carry. He's up the middle and has the first down, dragged down from behind by Brumfield at the 25-yard line, which will stop the clock with 22.8 seconds to play in the third. They'll spot the ball for play, wind the clock, and Ironton will probably take this one to the third quarter, and that's indeed what they'll do. Gage Salyers is standing on the sideline next to head coach Trevin Pendleton. 27-10, to 10, Ironton leads Fairland after three quarters of play. We're back with the fourth after this timeout on Fox Sports 1230 and 1420. He's out. Fawson is the tailback in the backfield with two receivers right, one left. Salyers in the shotgun, takes the snap, looking right, looks to throw, steps up in the pocket, now he's going to run. Salyers across the 15, moves left, he's hit hard, takes it inside the 10, and drives his way down to the six-yard line. Salyers hit by Michael Stitt and brought down, but that will move the chains again and give Ironton a first down and goal to go situation. This is the offense that the Tiger fans have been looking for. Uh, obviously, they were shut down against Wheelersburg in week one, scoring just six. Last week, needing a block punt for a touchdown and a long 74-yard touchdown run by Reed Carrico. But now they've, they're on the verge of punching it in again. Shotgun again. Salyers looks to throw. Here comes the pressure. He's going to throw across the middle. It's nearly intercepted right into the hands of J.D. Brumfield. I don't know if Salyers didn't see him there or, or what, but Brumfield dropped back and had that one hit him right in the paws, and it falls incomplete second and goal. Yeah, all eyes are on his post pattern uh, receiver and uh, did not see the uh, the quarterback just standing in the middle of the field and dodges a bullet there because right now it's 27-10, and the Dragons just scored on their last possession, so they want nothing more than to stop the Tigers on this one. So second and seven, second and goal, if you will. Carrico back in for Fawson, lining up as the tailback. Two receivers right, one left. Here is the option of the right side. Quarterback keeper for Salyers, cutting up field, breaks a tackle, gets down near the goal line, and he's in. Touchdown, Fighting Tigers. Seven-yard touchdown run by Gabe Salyers, and Ironton goes up 33-10. Escorted into the end zone by Reed Carrick. That's his fourth score of the night? Yes, sir. Eleven minutes, fourteen seconds to play in the ball game. And Isaac Unger is on to attempt the extra point. It is up and it is through the uprights, and the Tigers lead at 34 to 10 with 11:14 to play. We're back after this timeout on Fox Sports 12:30 and 14:20. Isaac Unger kicking off with the Tigers, who now lead at 34 to 10. Fairland Dragons here at Fairland High School. The kick is to the near side, fielded by Michael Stitt on the run at the 14, running left across the 20, hit by Crawford, or excuse me, that is uh, Crabtree, and corkscrewed down at about the 24. 
Well, nice tackle on that return. Right yes. By Dalton Crabtree. 11 minutes, nine seconds to play in the fourth quarter. Fairland with the football at the 24. Ironton on the board again after a seven play, 67 yard drive that took 248 off the clock. Gage Salyer's fourth rushing touchdown of the night from seven yards out. Extra point kick by Isaac Unger makes it 34 to 10, 11 14 at that point. Fairland back on offense. They will send Gavin Hunt wide to the left with two receivers to the right. Lambiot from the shotgun looks to throw again. Screen pass out to Stitt who makes the catch. He'll take it at the 20, out to the 25. Flag Maybe comes in out to the 30-yard line, line, but we'll get a hold or a block in the back. Called, looked like uh, Kyle Rankin was back there. Maybe a hook the defender, and it will be a hold. So you back it up 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and the Dragons are behind the chains. Oh, we saw Seth Fawson coming in that time on a – a little delayed blitz, if you will, and I'm sure somebody put a paw on him to hold. But nonetheless, a penalty. We'll move the Dragons back. It's at the 12, 12 yard line. I believe so, yep. First and 20. Zeke Ramey, Riley Sowards, the receivers to the right side. Sowards in a slot that way. Single wide out to the left. Lambiot from the shotgun. Ironton showing blitz here. They come with it. Quarterback keeper. Lambiot breaks a couple of tackles and stumbles Lambiot down and falls keeper. forward to the 14, maybe the 15. They'll give him the 15. And the Dragons look at second down and long. Fairland next week will be on the road. In fact, their next three games are on the road. They're at Waverly, at Rock Hill, and at Gallia Academy. Second down and a bunch. So Clock will say 18, or the scoreboard will say second and 18. They'll send three receivers to the left, one right. The lone receiver to the right is Brennan West. Lambiot from the shotgun looks to throw again. Here comes the pressure. He's hit by Carrico and dropped back at the five yard line. Nobody touched him. Reed Carrico explodes. On Joel Lambiot, and it's third and forever now. And that spot all the way to the seven, so an eight-yard loss on the play. They have to get to the 34 for a first down. So it's third down and 27. And came and shot in there in a hurry. Fawson on the previous play, disrupting that, and this time it's Reed Carrico. I think he's trying to battle himself for the hit of the game. Play clock down to one and zero. They'll drop the flag, and that's a delay of game. They didn't take the timeout. They just said, and I think it's penalty, whatever. Third down and a whole bunch. Again, they need to get to the 34-yard line. 24, I'm sorry. They need to get to the 24-yard line for a first down where you don't want to see the penalty come back and yes. bite him. Two receivers right, one left. Single setback. Lambiot takes the low snap in the shotgun, fires a pass out to the left side. It is incomplete. Intended for Gavin Hunt. And he is popped pretty good by Cameron Deer. It almost looked like they wanted to do the old hook and lateral yeah. play. Uh, but that pass was too high, and the punt team will come on for the Dragons. And again, the consistency of the Fighting Tigers defensively, Jason, has gone game to game to game. Yeah. They've shown up every game. They've made great plays, and they continue to get even better. And again, it's, they're going to need that next week as uh, the most potent offense, if you will, yeah. coming to town in the Ashton Tomcat. I bet Fairland's saying, find 28. Put a body on him. Snap back to Lambiot. Ironton almost got it again. End over end kick. Thomas backpedaling. Fields it at the 42-yard line. Runs right. Cuts back to the left. Now back to the right side. Trying to bounce outside. Breaks a tackle. Another flag on the play <laughs> as the Thomas gets inside the 30 and down to the 28-yard line. But again, there's going to be a hold or a block in the back. And it's or a clip. Thomas on the return. And this one's going to back Ironton up. And the flag dropped at the 38. So... Block in the back. Block in the back against the Tigers. Let's 
So with 8.49 to play, Ironton will try to grind out as much clock as they can. They'll have it first down and 10 in Fairland territory at the 48. 10 yard penalty, Richard. Already leading 34 to 10. 48 yard line, 48. Start at the 48. Carrico, Deer, Grizzle, head to the sideline. Duncan, Fawson, Hacker on the field. You got an I formation with Fawson and Duncan. And Duncan is the tailback, and he'll get the handoff on the carry, moving right, tackled at the line of scrimmage, no gain, Duncan second out of 10. And that was Caleb Mullins on the stop. Duncan's first carry of the game, so I'll spot him a yard, so about a half a yard gain on the play for Ethan Duncan and the Fighting Tigers. 8.27 rolling clock, Ironton 34, Fairland 10. Tigers will go with the pro set again. Fawson at fullback, Duncan at tailback. Freeman wide right, Hacker wide left. Salyers taking, faking the handoff. Bootleg, beautiful fake, but didn't fool Lambiot, who came right around and stopped Salyers after a short gain to the 46. Well, he faked that ball on the handoff, put it on his hip, and had a lot of room here, but Lambiot was able to close quickly and stop him after a minimal game. Third down and about eight yards to go now. Yeah. All 10 players for the Dragons went with who they thought had the ball, except for Lambiot, who had Salyers all the way, but more importantly, he had to make, make the tackle, and he did. So third and about seven and a half, but we'll call it third and eight. Play clock down to 10. Ironton gets to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers right, one left. Down to five seconds. Salyers from the shotgun. Takes the snap, looks to throw. Here comes the pressure. He'll roll to the right side. Salyers looking downfield, fires to the sideline and thrown in front of the intended target, Bryson Thomas. That'll stop the clock, make it fourth down, and about seven and a half, eight yards to go for the Tigers with 7.16 to go. Punt team out on the field once again. Opportunity for other players to be featured in the backfield, albeit Duncan and then Fawson from the tailback position. Fourth down and seven and a half, eight. Number seven, Gavin Hunt going back to receive the punt. Ethan Duncan, punt formation, standing at the 42. He has the, he has the uh, potential to get into one. Let's see if he can get into one. He's, he shanked a few today. Better kick, Better kick, low yeah. kick. It takes an iron roll after hitting inside the 20, rolls down inside the 10, the 5, and scooped up by Cameron Deer at the 4. So a long field for the Dragons. With 7.06 to play here in the fourth quarter, they trail it 34 to 10. And the official spot is going to be with the three-yard line. So far, just a sprinkle, right? Yep. Nothing major. Just one of those annoying rains. Just light mist. Trips right, single wide out left. Lambiot from the shotgun. Stip back there with him. Lambiot takes, fumbles the snap, and who's got the football? Stip picked it up. That ball bounced on the turf, and he picked it up and ran to the left side and got out near the 10 yard line. Still on the carry. Must so play for seven three. yards. Okay. Salyers goes out. And onto the field for Ironton comes Justin McSorley. Trips to the right side again. That's the wide side of the field. Lambiot. Takes the shotgun snap, quarterback keeper around the left side, and he is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped, and that's Cameron Deer again, yeah. Mm -hmm. All over the field. Third down now, and six, maybe seven yards to go. Seven, seven yard line at the spot, so minus three on the play. Yeah. 
So the Dragons dial up here with 552 and rolling in the fourth quarter. Trips right, single wide out left. Lambiot from the shotgun, claps his hands, takes the snap, rolls the pocket to the near side, shuttle pass again on the inside. Stitt makes the catch, gets across the 10, out to the 13-yard line. And pass complete to Stitt. Close to, well, he's got it. I think he's got the first down. He got the 14. They needed the 13. That's the fourth time, I believe, they've run that little yep. shovel pass on the inside. First and 10 Dragons. Clock continues to roll. Two receivers each way. Shotgun again for Lambiot. Takes the low snap, looks to throw right. Pocket collapses, he's gonna run with it. Moving left, he is hit once, breaks a tackle, Lambiot fights Lambiot. forward across the 20 and out to the 21 yard line before Dalton Crabtree brings him down. Dalton Crabtree a sophomore, Cameron Deer a sophomore, Reed Carrico a sophomore. You and I are sophomores. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think. Here's the fake handoff. Lambiot, the keeper again around the left side. He will have the first down, breaks a couple of tackles, still on his feet. Breaks another tackle at the 30, moves right, running all the way across the field. He's across the 40. He's across midfield. Carrico hustling and brings him down from behind at the 44 of Ironton, but he broke about four or five tackles on that run. Shifting the field from the left to the right side, and it'll be a first down for the Dragons. And Ironton All takes right, a timeout. 4.30 to play, 34-10, Ironton leading. We're back in 60 seconds on Fox Sports 12.30 and 14.20. First down 10, Fairland at the Ironton 43-yard line. Ironton leading 34-10 with 4.30 to play in the fourth. Jason Filiot, Kevin Anthony on Fox Sports 12.30 and 14.20. Shotgun formation for Joel Lambiot, who takes and hands off to J.D. Brumfield, who runs left side. He's got a first down as he splits a couple of defenders and is tackled yeah, inside the Irons in 30. These last, uh, wipe out that three and out on the last drive, but two of the three drives Fairland's had here lately have been for big yards. Maybe too little, too late though. 14 yard pickup there. And this will spot a 14 yard game. I guess our iHeartRadio app is now up and running, fixed in the fourth quarter. Here's Lambiot under pressure. He's There's hit from behind man. by Cameron Deer. Flag oh, comes in, but Deer comes up with a sack back at the 31. Holding is the call, but of course that uh, take that take the play. Holding against the Dragons. Back. So after tonight, both of these teams will be two and one, and Tigers getting some momentum as they head into Ashland Week at Tanks Memorial Stadium. Friday night, 7.30 kickoff. All the OVC games are 7 o'clock kickoffs. Ashland will be 7.30. Ten yard penalty, 29 to the 39 goes the football, so first and 20 for the Tomcats. Clock moves, 3.52 to play. Ironton 34, Fairland 10. Trips right, single wide out left. Shotgun to Lambiot, pressure again. Steps up in the pocket, fires downfield, incomplete. Looking for Sowards on the seam route. And that incomplete pass brings up second down and 10. Yeah, that's two pass plays that I can remember where he was trying to get the ball to the OVC player of the week of last week, Riley Sowards. And Sowards, again, has not caught a ball this afternoon and this evening. So second down and 20 for the Dragons. Trips right, single wide out left. Lambiot from the shotgun. Ironson coming with the pressure again. Screen pass out to Stitt who makes the catch at the 45. Has some blocking down the sideline across the 40, across the 30. Out of bounds. Uh, let's see where they stop. Looks like he's laying on the track over there. He landed hard. 
They'll help him up. And he goes right back down to a seated position there on the track. And where the spot is, it looks like it's going to be a 19, when it's all said and done, a 19 yard completion. Mm -hmm. That was a perfect play call. I and mean, you had Irons coming with the blitz. And nice little lob pass there from Lambie off the stick. He gave a thumbs up to his mom in the crowd as he comes off and says, I'm okay. You got to talk to mom when you're coming off sure the football field. Mom, yeah. Mom's got to get that thumbs up. He's, he's good to go. All right, and the Dragons will have it third down and two. Lambiot now lines up under center with trips to the right side. Single setback in the backfield is Brumfield. Now he backpedals into the shotgun formation with Brumfield on his left hip. Claps his hands a couple of times, takes the snap. Quarterback keeper up the middle, moves left, brought down by Ethan Duncan. Just inside the 20-yard line to the 18, that'll be good enough to move the sticks and give the Dragons a first down. Three twenty-nine to go. Officials are coming together to talk about something. Was there a flag? Dead ball, personal foul against Ironton. Okay. okay. That'll be a half the distance penalty. Four yard pickup to start with for Lambiot. That gives him a 111 rushing on the night. And flip my page here. And Check mark. Is that half the distance to the goal? Yeah, yeah. First down and goal. From just inside the 10. Lambiot from the shotgun. Sets up, fires a pass across the middle that is going to be caught at the five. Moving left into the end zone. Gavin Hunt for the touchdown. So that'll go down as a nine yard pass from Lambiot to Gavin Hunt. First touchdown pass thrown tonight by yep. the quarterback. Line up for the extra point. Alec Bruce. And it is low and good though. It just good. does cross the crossbar there. 34-17, Ironton leading Fairland with 3.14 to play in the ball game. Let's step aside for 60 seconds here on Fox Sports 12.30 and 14.20. Irons are not guarding against that. 13 of 25 passing, 70 yards for Joel Lambiot. 111 on the ground, there you they go. Do. Yep, and the ball is popping free. Yeah. Like a tiger came up to get it, and then uh, did it go ten yards though? Well, yeah. Well, if Ironton hit it, it doesn't matter. Uh, so the Tigers do recover at the 48. Three minutes, 13 seconds to play in the ball game. Ironton with it, first and ten at the Fairland 48-yard line. Some of the Fairland fans starting to head out. Ironton hoping to use these final. Three minutes of game time quickly. Halftime, Oak Hill leads Rock Hill 20 to 14. I formation, two receivers left. Salyers under center, takes, turns. Nope, fakes the handoff and he wants to throw, but the pocket collapses. He's going to roll out to the right side, launches one to the sideline, intended for Ethan Duncan, and falls incomplete. Second down. Gage three of 11 passing tonight. 39 total yards on the ground. He's got 11 carries for 61. And of course, it's those four touchdown runs that he's had tonight of seven, 10, one, and five in reverse order and respectively. I had to say that reverse order and respectively. Yeah, that's pretty good. Thank you. Right there. <laughs> 304 left, 
clock stopped. I formation, single wide out to each side of the field. Here's Salyers taking and handing off to Fawson right up the middle. He's got some room across the 40, 35, 30, and spun down at the Fairland 29. Fawson ball carry. Biggest carry for Seth Fawson tonight as the Tigers move the chains again. 18 yards for the big fella. And they mark him back to the 30. Start the clock again, first down and 10. 2.55 to play. The clock will wind once again. Thomas wide right, Hacker wide left. High formation. Here's a handoff again to Fawson, right up the gut. He's got some room again, lower in the shoulder, knocking over defenders and taking them with him inside the 20-yard line down to the 18. Spot gives him 12 yards. Fawson said, forget this running up the clock stuff. I want in the end zone. 2.37 to go. That's 66 yards on the night. His biggest offensive night, uh, his biggest offensive output of, of yeah. the three games. So seven carries, 66. Gets a breather here. As Reed Carrico is back in at tailback, Cameron Deer at fullback. Failing coming with the blitz. Here's a screen pass that is going to be overthrown, intended for Deer or Carrico. I don't know. Both of them were in the neighborhood. Sorry, pass falls in. It was overthrown for Deer and underthrown for Carrico. Clock stops, 2.15. Yep. Pretty good pace in the first half, I think, right? Oh, yes. In the second half, we just. Yeah, ball down, slow down. The Dragons having to uh, kind of play for their lives and play behind. And a couple of touchdowns there in the second half. High formation. Here's the handoff to Carrico, right side, behind some blockers. Moving forward, gets down inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Jacob Rankin had a handful of jersey and wouldn't let him go any further until a couple of his teammates came and finished him off. Third down and about four and a half yards to go for Ironton. Clock under two minutes now, a minute 52 and counting. Four yard pickup for Reed Carrico. 19 carries, 153 for him on the night. 66 yards rushing for Fawson, 61 for South. Fawson back in at fullback. Carrico at tailback. The handoff goes to Fawson, breaks a tackle at the line, still dragging people with him down inside the 10-yard line, gets all the way to the five, Fawson first down and goal. Nine-yard pickup for the young fella. He's got 75 rushing yards. We're at that point now where you, know, you could drop to a knee and in this one, but we'll see if they try to punch another one in. Single wide receiver to each side of the field. Pro set, I formation. Gage Salyers under center. Takes the snap, hands off to Fawson again. Lower in the shoulder, dragging a couple with him down toward the goal line, and he's in. Touchdown run of five yards from Seth Fawson, his first rushing touchdown of the season. The Tigers have gone up now 40 to 17. And you can safely say he earned that one. And he got that the hard way, putting the helmet down, the head down, and boom, 80 yards rushing. And he joins the other two with touchdowns this evening. Gage Salyers had four, Reed Carrica with one, and now Seth Fawson with one from five yards out, nine carries, 80 yards. The kick after is G double O D is good. 41-17 Ironton. That caps a seven play 48 yard drive that took Two minutes and 14 seconds. Yeah, both teams will look toward, toward, excuse me, week number four. Line drive kick that will hit at the 10. Stitt picks it up at the six. He'll run left across the 10, 15, out to the 20 and 23 yard line. Brought down at that point by Jacob Sloan. So with 52.6 left, the Dragons will have it first down and 10 from the 24. Got uh, Brennan, I don't know if Brennan West was checking in. Brennan West is into the game, but also Lambia. 
back on the football field. All right, Lambie out from the shotgun, two receivers each side of the field. Ironson again only rushing three. They've done that pretty much all night, rushing three, dropping eight. Lambiot pump fakes, now throws to the sideline, and the pass is going to be caught, sliding down and making the reception for Fairland to Zeke Ramey at the 35-yard line. That'll stop the clock while they reset the chains. Now they'll wind it once again with 43, 42 seconds to go. Lambiot again in the shotgun. There's movement at the line, and there's going to be offsides called against Ironton. Five-yard penalty. Penalty got lot, number 15. Got a lot of new players in there for Ironton right now. Will York and Braxton Pringle are your safeties. As Lambiot takes the snap, looks to throw again, launches one down the far sideline, and it is, did he catch that diving catch? What a great catch by Brennan West, diving down at the 30. Wow, he laid out for that and one. Pass complete by Brandon West. And makes the reception for a first down, 29.9 to play. Lambiot now under center. Probably just going to spike the ball, stop the clock. They'll wind it now. Lambiot throws it into the turf, and that'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to play. Again, Ironton with a 41-17 lead over the Dragons. And I, I tell you what, Kevin, not a lot of Ironton folks have left this one. No. You look across the way. Some have, I'm sure, but for the most part, you still see a bunch of orange and black over there. Lambiot from the shotgun again with twin wide receivers to each side of the field. Quarterback keeper as Lambiot runs up the middle, dashes left, tries to cut back right, slips a little bit, and it's going to be brought down shy of the first down. They'll keep the clock rolling. He's brought down at the 22, and Fairland will take a timeout with 16.9 seconds to play simply because we want to keep this one going as long as we can. Eight-yard rush, 119 rushing on the night for Lambia. Third down and a yard and a half to go. Zeke Ramey wide right. Riley Sowards slot to the right side. Two receivers left, McFarlane and Hunt. Lambiot from the shotgun. Stitt back there with him. Lambiot takes the snap, steps up in the pocket, fires across the middle. The pass is caught again by Gavin Hunt. Moving right, brought down by Carrico inside the five at the four-yard line. Nine seconds to play. That'll stop the clock to reset the chains. First down and goal to go for the Dragons. They'll wind the clock again. Eight seconds and seven. Lambiot from the shotgun. Takes the snap, rolls the pocket to the left, looks downfield, here comes the pressure, he is hit, breaks a couple of tackles, still on his feet, dives into the end zone for the touchdown as the clock hits zero. Lambiot four yard touchdown run as time winds down. Do they have to kick the extra point or they, no, it doesn't look like they will. So it'll just end at a 41-23 final score. Ironton gets the win over the Fairland Dragons to improve to two and one. The Dragons fall to two and one. Lambiot's touchdown run caps a five play, 76 yard drive that took 52 seconds. Ironton wins it over the Fairland Dragons, 41-23 final score.